G'day and welcome to the January 2018 Warp 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 war, war Blacksmith Challenge. Well, the challenge for this month is to make a hammer. And as you can see, my forge isn't lit because middle of summer, it's too hot, I can't do it. So, I've been racking my brains, what am I going to do? Because I love doing these challenges and I don't really want to miss out. So, the option was to have a miss this month, but I'm too stubborn. So, I have a cunning plan. Who said I have to forge a hammer? I know blacksmithing is forging, but what if I make a hammer that forges? So, the plan is, I'm going to make myself a power hammer. Spontaneous, yes. Do I need it? Yes, definitely, because I get massive arm pumps, so it's going to help me. Do I have the time? No. Do I have the equipment? Yeah, I've got most of the stuff. So I think it's a go. Here's a spring out of a Toyota Hilux. Um, it's probably a bit heavy. I'll take those two flatters off there, and um, I'll use those other ones at the bottom. And uh, that's the start. So let's go hunting for some bits. So here's my trusty old train track anvil that I started with. Um, I think that's going to make perfect hammers for my power hammer so we're going to salvage that we're going to cut it in half down the middle here and that'll form our top and bottom hammer i've also got this little giant um, saw which you know what with a bit of work it might work but it's very old it's broken and it's got a good little motor here which works the pulley on it so i'm probably going to use that motor i do have a mate with a couple of other motors so i'll see what he's got first but if not I can rip the motor off this and some other bits and pieces. I also have a massive piece of 150 by 150 cypress pine, which has absolutely nothing to do with this project. Alrighty, so this build, the challenges are, what design to use? I have two ideas. One of them's with a car tire, because I have plenty of car tires and rims. Um, the other idea is with some pulleys. I don't have pulleys big enough to slow it down enough. Um, everything I've got is automotive size and it'll be way too violent um, with a smaller pulley so I've got to really down the ratio and I'd really like to use stuff I've got laying around I've got a lot of stuff um, that I can use so yeah let's see how we go let's um, lay this thing out see what we've got and uh, I've got a fair bit of an idea of the plan in my head um, I've just got to work out which design to do but the more I think about it the easier I think going to be if I use a car wheel because I have hubs, bearings, um, that means there'll be no belt which I don't have to go and buy or chase and um, the only concern would be the bearing on the motor because I would need to run a flat style drive off that motor and um, whether it's going to be too much load I mean I could put a bearing on the other side Let's have a look at that audio. All right, let me explain it. And I do hope my two anvils line up better than that drawing. But anyhow, you'll get the idea. So we have the basic C-shaped frame up here. We'll have the, the piston, I guess, the drive shaft attached to two pieces of my railroad track which will then be that'll be bolted down to this part and bolted to the ground around here um, here is the motor which I'll have on a pivoting platform so when you put your foot down on your pedal it pushes the motor towards that wheel so I'll have a drive on there and then that will in turn turn the tire the wheel so as the wheel turns, I'll have another plate here with a, a um, with an offset pivot, which will, when that turns, it's going to push that shaft up and down, which will in turn push that spring, that Hilux spring that I've got, which will pivot in the middle. And as that pushes up, it's going to push that down and it's going to smack my metal like a hammer. So yeah, that's the basic design. All right, so I've done a bit of a run around my property and found a lot of the metal that I need to build this and I've just nutted out my sizes where I've got to cut and what I need there's other bits I'm going to need but this will give me my basic frame and um, I've also changed the design so that 
main post is going to go up the centre. I don't see why. It needs to be at the back there, and uh, I think it's going to be stronger with it pivoting off the middle. So yeah, let's go and cut it up. That there is exactly how we're going to make this power hammer to work. And it looks like we're going to have a belt blowout. That's awesome. starting to take shape and just like that our bracing is done so now I have to work out the pivot for this and after that I have to work out the ram that'll do me for today I'm knackered but we've got our top pivot nutted out I've still got to get my bolt in there but that's gonna work just fine Still got to source my material for my ram and I'll leave nutting out the engine and the uh, conrod mechanism till last.
the power hammer without the power. All seems to be working. Still gotta get that bolt. And it's gonna get a nice coat of paint. So now I've just gotta work out what I'm gonna do as far as powering it goes. I'm not convinced on the tire thing yet, but we'll see what happens. All right, so we're onto our, I think, fourth working day of this power hammer build. And I've done a bit of research on the different types of drives and I'm gonna stick with that tire idea. Um, I've seen a few examples on YouTube which kind of work. So yeah, let's start doing that side of it and um, we're on a downhill slope. I wish my garage floor was flat. work and I've got that wheel mounted but as for right now it's getting late it's beer o'clock all right well it's time to salvage this little motor I'm gonna leave it on that platform because that will work with what I'm doing and then I'll just take those bottom rollers off we've got the motor located in place just welding in the mounting brackets now and then we can make the actuating foot pedal so that fast 10 times has become a dead set scrounge fest for materials on this. I've just about run out of everything good and uh, I've got to make my pedal yet. My treadle, I've got to make my treadle. When in doubt, use rebar.
moment of truth as far as ratios go. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hey, that's an awesome ratio. Alrighty, so the only bit left really is to connect that to that. This is genuinely the first test. I've just switched it on, but I haven't tried it yet, so let's see what happens. Might chuck these on. So last night I took the time and painted the power hammer, but before I show you the finished product and the warped part of this episode, because it is a warped challenge, I just want to give a shout out to four channels that I'd really like you to check out. The first one, Southdown Waters Forge. The second one, Impact Junkie. The third one, Rusty Pearson. And the fourth one, Warp Legacy. Now, Tuan at Warp Legacy is a guy that organises these Warp Blacksmiths challenges. So show him some support. Show them other guys some support. Subscribe to their channel. Tell them I sent you. That would be really, really cool. I'd really appreciate I'll that. Stick the links to all their channels in the description. So anyway, let's go and have a look at this hammer. So here she is. A nice coat of machine enamel green. Um... I'm pretty happy the way it turned out. And you know, the total build cost on this thing was zero dollars. It's stuff that I had laying around or I got donated. So it cost me nothing, which I'm pretty stoked about. Let's fire this up. And I heard somebody say warped before. One, two, three, four. 